Hello, welcome to Morning Manna, May the 16th, 2021. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can come to you today to continue our study of your word. We're grateful for all that you give, and we're thankful for how we have learned so much from you. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to fill us with understanding that our lives might reflect you in every detail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our subject today is Gifts of the Spirit, and we are still in Bible readings of For the Home Circle, published in 1889. The title again, May the 16th, 2021, Gifts of the Spirit. Question. Concerning what subject ought we be informed? 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 1 says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Question. When Christ ascended, what did he give to men? Ephesians 4 and verse 8 says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascendeth on high, he led men captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Question. What were these gifts that Christ gave to men? Ephesians 4 and verse 11 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Question. How are these gifts elsewhere spoken of? 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28 says, And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after some miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. All right? So that's 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 28. They also speak of those gifts. Question. For what purpose were these gifts bestowed upon the church? Ephesians 4, verses 12 through 15 says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So what result is to be obtained by the exercise of the gifts in the church? Ephesians 4 and verse 13 says, Till we all come to a knowledge of the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Question. How is unity preserved in the diversities of the gifts? 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 4 says, Now they are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Question. For what purpose is the manifestations of these one spiritual gifts given? In 1 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 10, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another, device, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. So the question again is, for what purpose is the manifestation of this one spirit given? The diversification of the gifts, faith, wisdom, healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. So who controls the distribution of the gifts of the Spirit? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11 says, But all these worketh that one and the same, the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as 
is his will. So who controls the distribution? The self-same spirit. Question. Was it God's design that all should possess the same gift? Verse 29 and 30 of the same chapter says, Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? And the answer to that would be, of course, no. Question. Were the gifts of the Spirit to continue forever? 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 8 says, Whether there be prophecies, they shall be gone, done away. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall be done away. Question. When will the gifts of the Spirit be no longer needed? 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 10 says, When that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. In Signs of the Times, March the 15th, 1910, under the heading, Gifts of the Spirit, we see a very informative and very necessary issue that we need to consider carefully as we consider our study of the gifts of the Spirit today. Knowing exactly what it is that God has in mind for us, you and I must know and understand all of what God has in mind so that we might follow carefully the things that God has given to us. All right? Let us take a look at that again. And let us expand that some more. In the Signs of the Times, March the 15th, 1910, beginning at paragraph 1, it says this. Before he left his disciples, Christ breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Again he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But not until after the ascension was this gift received in its fullness. Not until through faith and prayer the disciples had surrendered themselves fully for his working was the outpouring of the Spirit bestowed. Then, in a special sense, the goods of heaven were committed to the followers of Christ. So notice here the prerequisite. Not until the faith and prayer the disciples surrendered themselves fully to his working. Then, after they had done that, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Continuing, When he ascendeth up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gifts of Spirit, the Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. The gifts are already ours in Christ but their actual possession depends upon our reception of the Spirit of God. The talents that God entrusts to His Church represent especially the gifts and blessings imparted by the Holy Spirit. To one is given by the Spirit the word of a wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Not all the gifts are imparted to each believer, but to every servant of the master, some gifts of the spirit is promised, according to his need for the Lord's work. In all the Lord's arrangements, there is nothing more beautiful than his plan of giving to men and women a diversity of gifts. The church is his garden, adorned with a variety of trees, plants, and flowers. He does not expect the hyssop to assume the proportions of the cedar, nor the olive to reach to the height of the stately palm. Many have reached and received but a limited religious and intellectual training. 
but God has a work for this class to do if they will labor in humility and trust in him. God has different ways of working and he has different workmen to whom he entrusts various gifts. One worker may be a ready speaker, another a ready writer, another may have the gift of sincere, earnest, fervent prayer, another the gift of singing, another may have special skill in explaining the word of God with clearness, and each gift is to become a power for good, because God works with the laborer. To one God gives the word of wisdom, to another knowledge, but all are to work under the same head. The diversity of gifts leads to a diversity of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all. Different gifts are imparted to different ones, that other workers may feel the need of one another. God bestows their gifts, and they are employed in his service, not to glorify themselves, the possessor, not to uplift man, but to uplift the world's Redeemer. They are to be used for the good of all mankind by representing the truth, not testifying to a falsehood. It may seem to some that the contrast between these gifts and the gifts of a fellow laborer is too great to allow them to unite in harmonious effort. But when they remember that there are varied minds to be reached, and that some will reject the truth as it is presented to one laborer, only to open their hearts to the same truth as presented in a different manner to another, they will hopefully endeavor to labor together in unity. Their talents, however diverse, may all be under the control of the same spirit. In every word and act, kindness and love will be revealed. And as each worker fills his appointed place faithfully, the prayer of Christ for the unity of his followers will be answered, and the world will know that these are his disciples. The outpouring of the Spirit in the days of the apostles was the former reign, and glorious was the result. But the latter reign will be still more abundant. What is the promise to those living in those last days? Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Christ declares that the divine influence of the Spirit was to be with his followers until the end. But by some, this promise is not appreciated as it should be. Its fulfillment is not realized as it might be. Learning, talents, eloquence, every natural and acquired endowment may be possessed. But without the presence of the Spirit of God, no heart will be touched, no sinner won to Christ. When his disciples are connected with Christ, when the gifts of the Spirit are theirs, even the poorest and most ignorant of them will have a power that will tell upon hearts. God makes them the channel for the outworking of the highest influence in the universe. As the divine endowment, that is, the power of the Holy Spirit, was given to the disciples, so it will today be given to all who seek a right. This power alone is able to make us wise unto salvation and to fit us for the courts above. Christ wants to give us a blessing that will make us holy. These things have I spoken unto you, he says, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy might be full. Joy in the Holy Spirit is health-giving, life-giving. In giving us his Spirit, God gives us himself a fountain of divine influences to give health and life to the world. The promise of the gift is just as strong as and trustworthy now as in the days of the apostles. These signs shall follow them that believe. The gift of him who has all power in heaven and in earth are in store for his children. Gifts so precious 
that they come to us through the costly sacrifice of the Redeemer's blood. Gifts that will satisfy the deepest cravings of the heart. Gifts lasting as eternity. Will you not come to God as little children? Appropriate his promises? Plead them before him as his own words? If you do, you will receive fullness of joy. What God has said to us today, and he consistently says to us, is that he will give us that which we need to go forward. As the time came for the building of the tabernacle, God gave to each one of those builders a peculiar and a particular talent, a particular skill that allowed them to do the work that was necessary to be done. A work that was done in a way that was never done before because the gift had been specifically given for that purpose. As the message went forth and the apostles went forth to preach, each was given through the power of the Holy Spirit the gift that was necessary to communicate with all kinds of languages and cultures and people and individuals because this was the task that God had placed in their hands. And when he does that, he always provides the means to accomplish the task. The same is available to his children today. When God has given us an opportunity to speak or to witness, or to set an example, he always allows us the potential and the ability to do that task according to his will. If we will surrender ourselves to him and allow him to be our leader, allow him to be our guide, then we will be able to do that work which we know so little of. The truth of the matter is, that sometimes the work is being done by our example or by our word, and we are totally and absolutely unaware of what the Holy Spirit is accomplishing. It is because we have decided to surrender ourselves. It is because we have allowed ourselves to be led and be filled by a particular talent. Some of the talents that God gives today are not visible. visible. They're not auditory. Some of the talents that we have are just our ability to work with individuals, to reach out to them, to reach out for them, to encourage and to strengthen, to be compassionate and to be a close and abiding friend and a devoted uh, acquaintance. Most of these talents are not recognized as such, but the truth is that there are people in this world who are, world who are lonely and in need of assistance, in need of companionship, in need of someone in whom they can trust. And today God is calling you to be a witness, a powerful witness for him in so many other ways. Yes, your talent to preach, your talent to sing, your talent to teach, etc. are all there. But those talents that are silent, that are nonverbal, that reach out to individuals who are in need of someone that they can trust. Just by the life that you live, observed by others around you, they see the success in the calmness of your deportment and the way that you comport yourself in all circumstances. They see the way that you deal with your children in so many ways. And they see the result of those dealings with your children. They are drawn to you. God has given you that particular talent so that you might reach out to those who are in desperate need of assistance. So today God is calling you to surrender yourself completely to him, to allow your life to be led by him, to ask him to fill you with that which is needed so that the neighbor or the friend or the workmate or someone that you come in contact with might be drawn closer to him. If you ask him with an attitude of surrender and repentant attitude, then he will indeed grant and use your talent so that it might be a powerful, powerful use for good. Heavenly Father, today we thank you that you continue to call us into your service. We thank you that from your word we see examples where the Holy Spirit has done so many things for those who were willing to serve. And today we ask that you will use us in your service. 
allowing us to have the opportunity to do that which you would really have us do so that the work that must be done can be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This has been Morning Manna, May the 16th, 2021. Thank you.